Hello my chess friends. Uh, today I want to show you one of my games that I played in late 2015 against Mr. Perverdiev, 2300 ELO player. So um, I find this game instructive with regard to tactics and calculation and uh, open dynamic play. So I hope you'll enjoy it and learn. So here we go. Here we go. T later I'll turn on the engine, uh, but for now um, I don't want you to see the text of the game. There are pretty good moves there. So, Nidorf, Bishop e2, and well, not Nidorf, now transposed to Hedgecock, Scheveningen kind of positions. Castle, Bishop e7, f4, Castle, King h1, Knight c6. Um, I like this line, Knight x c6, b takes e5. Uh, although black should be fine with the correct play, but usually people are not aware of the best moves. And the same thing happened in this game as well. So, um, the thing is white gets a slightly better pawn structure and space because of this pawn. Um, but it could turn out to be a weakness. <coughs> Actually, later in the game I lost the pawn, so, but we'll see how it goes. Knight d7, <coughs> so the pawn is hanging have to protect it. How to do that? Well, you develop a piece and you protect the weakness. So queen c7. I had a game with Viktor Lasnichka uh, where queen a5 was played and um, um, I think white is better here. So queen c7 and I decided to play like in that game. I also played queen to d4 which turned out to be an inaccuracy. So here um, is like really really good combination. It's not a combination yet, but it can be. So the problem is the pawn is hanging, right? But if we imagine <coughs> a good idea in, even in open positions, uh, especially when the pieces are not yet developed, is to visualize where do I want all my pieces. Like if you have this mental image of where each piece belong, that would be easy to play. So if I had a few moves, I would play bishop to d3, then I would go queen g4, queen h5, and then I would put my rook on e1 to support important pawn, and then maybe I would jump with the knight there or there or there. That's quite a lot of arrows, but still it's good to have a visualization of uh, where your pieces belong. In this particular case, bishop d3 was an excellent move, freeing the queen to go to the king side and improving the bishop, and well, eventually connecting the rooks. Um, should have played this move. And after knight e5, a human way to proceed would be to go queen e2, pin the knight and complete the development with rook a to e1. And white is better here. White can win the pawn back or just dominate um, because white developed all his pieces and black is not even close. But the engine shows an amazing combination. I don't know if, well, it's really hard to, to spot it. It's bishop takes h7, king takes h7. Ah, uh, another thought that I want you to, to memorize or to, to have when you play any open position. I recommend starting calculating forcing moves. Forcing moves should be the priority in open positions. Maybe you're winning, maybe you're just crushing. So you start with considering forcing options. If none of the forcing options work, then you consider significantly improving your position. You'll see later in the game what I'm referring to. Step one, forcing moves. Step two, significantly improve some of your pieces. Not like h3, a3 kind of moves, significant improvement. All right, so this falls into the pattern. Forcing move, forcing check, capturing uh, on e5. So now white wants to go bishop takes g7 and then give a check with the queen. So let's say queen b6 somewhere. It's bishop g7, king g7, check, king goes anywhere and after rook f3, rook h3 is going to be a mate. So black has to go queen a5, pinning the bishop. And here only one amazing move that is crushing. It's b4 unbelievable combination. There is no chance I would have seen this one during the game. Distorting the, uh, if not before, uh, white has just good compensation. 
B4, amazing move, amazing move. Uh, the idea is that if queen takes B4, now the bishop is not pinned. Uh, bishop G7 doesn't work because king G7 and there is no check with the queen. Uh, but white plays another forcing move, rook F4, and now bishop G7 is coming. So black has to pin us again with queen A5. And now white continues with forcing move, rook G4, and after F6, uh, well, there are two ways to, to win this one, but rook g7 is the most straightforward. King g7, bishop f6, bishop f6 and queen a5, and white wins lots of material and eventually the game. So, um, I'm not saying that there, there was no way I could have seen, seen this one, but uh, playing bishop d3 and saying if knight e5, at least I have queen e2, f6 and rook e1, which is plus one according to um, Cloud Engine Houdini. So, and white has amazing initiative. We can win the pawn, we can move the knight, white can do whatever white wants. Black is in, in big trouble. Knight goes here, bishop goes here, we take. Uh, so, but bishop h7 is an amazing combination. So now let's see what happened next. I played queen d4, which turned out to be an inaccuracy. Queen will be harassed here. c5, queen e3, and bishop b7. My opponent completes the development, uh, almost. Um, and I should have done the same. For example, a good move was rook a to e1. Just centralize the rook, uh, later support this pawn, and white has good kingside chances here, although black seems to be fine. I played queen g3, which is a typical maneuver for this position, which I knew, but in a way it let me down, because in this case it, uh, it was still a good move, but after king h8, it's hard, it's hard to proceed. And here I came up with... Well, actually, I won the game because I played this weird move knight to d1. So, um, this doesn't fall in any kind of category of finding the best move. Why would you move the knight away from the center, distort the rooks? Where is it going? Well, the knight is going to e3 and then c4 or g4. And uh, apparently that was a good idea because knight, a uh, decent idea. Knight on c3 wasn't playing. So, uh, the evaluation was still around equality. So, knight d1, uh, I'm planning to move my knight somewhere. So, and my opponent, it turns out that he decided that you should punish a move like that. I can relate to that, but in this case it didn't work. So he played g5, forcing move g5. Uh, so, uh, simple calculation, bishop takes g5, rook g8, I'm completely pinned, h4 loses to many, many moves. Uh, not h6 for some reason, because of rook f7, but f6. Ah, f6, it's easy, the queen is undefended. So, of course, taking is not an option. Where to move the bishop? Well, e3 takes away the square from the knight. <coughs> so, bishop goes to d2 and hope for this diagonal. And my, now my opponent made a mistake. He took my pawn on e5. It looks tasty to take that pawn. But after that, <coughs> with very precise, active, aggressive play, I managed to win the game very quickly. f5 was the best move here. I should do passant. Queen g3, h takes g3, and I don't know, bishop takes f6, and I'm slightly better here, because black has four pawn islands and I have only two, but the advantage is very small. <coughs> he should have played this one. and But I'm assuming he was in the mode to punish me for this knight d1 play. So he played knight e5, and now it's go time. My opponent took my pawn, my pieces are still on the first file. What do I do? I do not waste a single move, single tempo. I play very aggressive chess. And after this, I managed to play, well, the first line of the engine. All the training that I did beforehand helped finding the best move in, in thousands of positions. So bishop c3, forcing move, pinning the knight. F6, the only response. What do we do now? We consider forcing moves. Well, bishop e5 doesn't do much, and that's it. So, forcing moves do not work. What's next? What's next? Significantly improve uh, one of my pieces, which is if this guy is just standing there. So, knight e3, as you can see below, Houdini says this is clearly the best move, otherwise black is fine. So, knight e3, connecting the rook, significantly improving the knight. Maybe it goes here, maybe it goes there. Rooks are connected. Here my opponent should have played rook a to c8 to protect the queen, to, to have possibility to move this knight. And here again, the best move was not 
just improving the position with rook a to e1, you always start with forcing moves. In this case, queen h3 was very strong move and suddenly black has, is having big trouble protecting this pawn. If bishop takes d5, pawn on a6 is hanging. How else can you protect this pawn? Queen d7 falls into rook d1. What else? f5, now the diagonal uh, is, is loose and, and knight f5, he takes f5, rook takes f5. Bishop f6, now rook to f1, and suddenly all white pieces. Uh, well, queen g7, oh, this is, is computer line. I don't know if, no, I would not have found it over the board. Bishop d3. So maybe after f5, there's a more human way to go. But this is clearly very dangerous. Clearly very dangerous. So, but my opponent played bishop d6. And uh, so clearly he wants to jump with the knight somewhere. Uh, or at least prepared to do that. So now rook a to d1 significantly improving the rook. Now all of my pieces are in the attack. Take a look what happened. A few moves ago my pieces were on back rank. My opponent takes one pawn and now you have to play very very energetic chess. Forcing move. Significantly improve your position. Significantly improve your position. And now again uh, there were uh, some moves but knight g4 is plus 4 plus 3.5 and everything else is just better knight g now it's time to go when you see that all of your pieces are ready take a look this bishop is amazing the queen is ready the rook is ready all the pieces are in the game the knight is here the bishop all the pieces are developed usually it's time to go usually it's action time and you start with forcing moves knight g4 is the one that's a forcing move you see a weak pawn, you attack it. You see that this knight cannot move because the bishop is in trouble. You go. Knight g4. Again, rook takes d6. Well, taking the bishop is, is better than taking the knight in open positions. But it also significantly activates the rook. And this knight is hanging. So my opponent played h5. And now according to engine, I made a mistake. According to engine, I should have played bishop g4, which, surprise, surprise, is another forcing move, and take on f6. But this was not so obvious to me that this is so crushing, because I have back rank problem, he has a good bishop. Rook f7, this is approximate variation by the engine. It says queen e5, and after doubling uh, the rooks, queen g5 is not so good because of rook g7, and there's a problem here. Apparently, after queen e6, white is just dominating. But, well, with, when you look with the engine eyes, it's, it's a win. But with human eyes, it was not that obvious to me that uh, I can do this. And you know that my rook is under attack. This is under attack. I have back rank problems. Um, I don't know. If black had a pawn on a5, probably bishop a6, that would be a problem for me. Then my back rank, let's say a5, a3, just for testing purposes. Bishop a6. No, queen g4 and queen g5. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, it didn't look that promising to me. But apparently it was correct. Uh, instead, I found h3 move. And uh, so he, uh, the game finished very quickly. The idea is he, if he moves, now I just take on f6. And if he doesn't move, what does he do? I calculated rook d8. And I, rook d3, by the way, only move. Rook d3, but I've seen that one. Attack the queen, forcing move. Forcing move, knight is hanging, and I just win a bunch of pawns. If knight goes to h6, I take on f6, uh, and then this one falls, and this one is hanging, and I have two bishops, and I eat a lot of pawns, rook d5. For example, rook g5 takes, 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 and I have two bishops and extra pawn. That should be uh, e a relatively easy one. Uh, another move was knight e5, and then I take, take, and then I can collect a bunch of pawns with checks. King h7, I take a lot of pawns. Well, I could play simple chest without counterplay, takes, takes, and king g1. Uh, we still have equal material, but black's pawns will collapse. This one is falling. These are double eh, It's awful, awful. Uh, the engine says this one is even better. But I don't know, just letting the rook to d1. That's for engine. It's clear. For me, it's not that clear. So I remember I was calculating like I would take on f8 and king f1. And I would win one or two pawns, which would be a win. So, and that was it. After h3, he played h4. 
and I just moved my queen to d3 and he resigned because queen is jumping to g6, e6, f6, g4, everything is uh, rook d7, queen g6 is coming. He just resigned here. But I want to come back a little bit to this moment where he ate my pawn. Uh, my position suddenly... I could feel life in my position because here uh, while my pieces are on back rank I don't like that but once your opponent makes an inaccuracy then you have to just go and get him very quickly and these were the only moves that lead to a win bishop c3 forcing significantly improves the position significantly improves the position and now if all the pieces are ready it's time it's go time it's go time h5 well there are many wins here I chose this one According to engine, that was not correct, but I think it's quite practical. And after this, he resigned. So, overall, when you play open position, start considering forcing moves. Captures, checks, threats, etc. If none of them work, you move down to finding the move that significantly improve your position. Like in this case, knight e3 move. And then rook ad1. With two moves, white completed the development and all the pieces are aimed at the weaknesses and loose pieces. And after that, it was just a matter of, of calculation. Of course, all of this should be supported by calculation. But the spirit of open position is usually you have no time. You have to act quickly, as quickly as possible. I hope you like this one. Mm, maybe in the future I'll show my game against Viktor Lasnichka from my god like 15 years ago no 12 years ago i think uh i'll show that game for for the same position the same pawn structure very similar at also 20 something moves uh, and game was finished i hope you liked it like share subscribe let your friends know about my channel take good care i'll see you later